thank you for inviting me to join you today. Uh, the theme of this year's Future Congress is no real limit. And yet we all know that humanity today is pretty much constrained by all kinds of limits when pursuing growth and prosperity. And in most cases, we have brought those trans constraints onto ourselves and now have to face the, the ignominious fate of being forced to adapt to an unpredictable natural world. At the core of the finding alternatives is to stop the loss, the loss of our ecological integrity and the biological foundation that supports all forms of life on Earth. Next, let me first share a message from China. The Chinese national government released its annual white paper today in Beijing, China's green development in the new era. The message is simple and clear. China is stopping the loss of nature within its territorial space. China and its people have embraced the ideology of ecological civilization that puts its, content, its current focus on protecting the ecological red lines, pricing natural capital, and promoting ecological compensation that addresses the equity issues in particular between the coastal, more developed regions and inland, less developed regions. The society has embraced that a sound equity environment is the foundation for a better life and the common aspiration of the people, and is now deeply embedded in its policy and practice that green development is development that follows the laws of nature to promote harmonious existence between humanity and the nature, development that obtains the maxim maximum social and economic benefits at minimum cost of resources and environmental impact and the sustainable and high quality development that protects the eco environment. Next, ecological red lines are the lifeline of national eco environmental security in China, with more than 30% of its land area now under the protection of the red lines. More than 17% of China's land area is now covered by more than 10,000 protected areas, bringing under effective protection of 90% of its natural terrestrial ecosystem types and 74% of key state protected wildlife species. Next, China's endeavor largely represents how human beings as a species on this planet are reckoning to the ecological crisis and loss of biodiversity that now threatens our existence and survival. Next. The planetary life supporting system are literally collapsing as represented by global warming, depletion of wildlife, and drastically damaged ecosystems that provide goods and services to support our lives and the livelihoods. Next. The sense of crisis has become more prominent. We long thought that we could force the natural world to adapt to our species, but with one million species to go extinct by the end of the century, we are living in the sixth mass extinction. Our species has no playbook for the mayhem that is unfolding around us, and we have become the despoilers that brought nature almost to its knees, but now it has become roaring back to cast us out. Next. What is encouraging and inspiring is that government leaders, the business and financial community, academia and the public at large are beginning to question the shibboleths by which we have lived our lives, interpreted the meaning of our existence and undertook the simple realities of staying alive and secure. To quote my mentor, Jeremy Ricking, the age of progress has given way to the age of resilience. Next. The embodiment of such a pivot is the shared global vision and the collective endeavor to redraw the planetary boundary through the Kuomintang Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework under Chinese presidency adopted the last month, in addition to the Paris Agreement that tackles climate change. Almost all nations are committed to halting the laws of nature, reversing the deterioration of the natural world, and bringing back harmony with nature, the popularly known 30 by 30 by 30 by 2030 has become the new signpost to guide actions and measure progress. Next, 
Against that backdrop, we understand better than ever the impact of mining on nature and biodiversity and start to reimagine mining for the future. The 2019 UN report highlighted that even though less than 1% of global land is used for mining, but the industry has significant negative impacts on biodiversity. For example, mining directly, indirectly contributes 9% of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon region. Next. And 40% of mining activity globally occurs in aqua regions with a strong declining trends in ecological integrity. In the meantime, we also know that nature positive, net zero negative impacts, nature based solutions, and value nature can contribute highly to global biodiversity conservation. Next. But there's one critical question that demands answers, solutions, and collaborations. Mining plays an essential role in climate change solutions, but renewable energy technologies rely heavily on mined metals and minerals found in many forested areas. Significant challenges will likely emerge if the climate-driven clean energy transition is not managed responsibly and sustainably. Next. Stopping the loss and turning nature positive has become a mainstream agenda. Next. Reduce, reuse, recycle, restore, remediate, recover, replace, repurpose, as well as redesign and reimagine are pretty the highlights of innovation of the day. Next. The World Bank has charted the climate smart mining building blocks that put at the core the, stop, the stopping, the, the loss, and turning nature positive. Next. Policymakers are taking steps to reduce and remove subsidies and incentives that harm nature while scaling up positive incentives for conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. Next, OECD will publish a new handbook for environmental due diligence in, mineral, in minerals and metals supply chain to help companies manage more effectively their risks and the negative impacts. Next, private sector forces are gearing up efforts to protect nature through such platforms and agencies as TNFD, WBCSD, Nature Finance Alignment Tools, Nature Action 100, Biodiversity Credit Alliances, among others. Next. China is bracing a recycling peak of retired EV batteries in its current five-year plan period between 2021 and 2025. That is expected to create a market large enough to mitigate significant negative impacts on nature. Next. The Tianqi Lithium, China's largest player and of, in the lithium battery material processing and supplier, has committed to lead the industry's effort to fight climate change and accelerate clean energy transition with a particular focus on net zero negative impacts on the environment and the people decarbonizing its operation, driving towards 100% recycling, maximum, maximum resources efficiency, and zero waste, as well as stepping up its actions towards nature positive. Next. Globally, we have witnessed realignment of prosperity and sustainability and the resetting of priorities under the context of transition from the age of progress to the age of resilience. Next. The re-entry card takes our species from separation and exploitation of the natural world to repatriation with the multitude of environmental forces that animate the earth, marking a repositioning of human agency to an increasingly unpredictable and rewilding planet. What is unfolding is a shift on all fronts, from productivity to regenerativity, from growth to flourishing, from globalization to localization, from consumerism to eco stewardship, from GDP to quality of life indicators, from negative externalities to circularity, and from geopolitics to biosphere politics. Jeremy Rifkin, an American futurist, in his new book, Age of Resilience, has pointed at us towards some mainstreaming trends to watch. Next. The passing of the industrial age the resilient revolutionary infrastructure morphing beyond capitalism, the ascendance of bioregional governance, 
representative democracy makes way for distributed bureaucracy and the rise of biophilia consciousness. Next, today, nature and people positive and protect what is good has become the shared vision and ethos of our new era. No real limit means that we need to act now, act faster and act together. And that is let all us race to the race and become to the top runner together. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.